I work 30 or 40 minutes, you know, each morning. I work a little bit more on weekend mornings. And that first contact took place exactly two months later. So this is not a huge project. I mean, you could have done, I could have done it a lot faster, but I took my time and I didn't, you know, kind of get obsessed with it. It's better to take it little by little. But a two month project, it's not too bad. I think it's, it's, uh, it's doable. Um, problems and setbacks. One thing I always point out on a project like this, uh, home brewing, especially SSB home brewing, is not for the faint of heart. This is not plug and play, and patience is required. These things never work perfectly the first time, no matter how carefully you do it. And I did have problems with this. The receiver at first was, for the first couple of days, it was really kind of deaf. I mean, I, and I, I wrote to Farhan, I said, what do you think? And he said, well, check the mixers. He says, every time we have problems with the receiver, it's with the mixers. And I checked the mixers, and sure enough, I had put diodes in there that had an excessively high forward resistance. I should have used diodes with a much lower forward resistance. And as soon as I changed the diodes, the receiver really brightened up. It was great. Um, I, like I described, I had some trouble with the AF amp. Um, and that was just a matter of adapting the circuit that somebody else had used to this, to this rig, but that worked out pretty well. RF amplifiers, uh, they did oscillate a little bit on this thing. And you always have to look at it that RF amplifiers are beasts that need to be tamed. So there is some exorcism involved. And I, I found also that there's an ugly, there was an ugly ripple in my crystal filter. When you look at the pass band of the crystal filter, there was some ugly ripple in there that didn't belong there. It didn't really prevent me from using it. People didn't notice it, but it bothered me, and I later went back and, and fixed it. But you have to be willing, I think, to anticipate. You have to anticipate problems, and you have to sort of be patient and realize that this is just a different way of, of, of building radios. Well, yeah. What was the problem with the crystal filter? Well, with the crystal filter, you know, it's everything, each crystal filter is different because the, the physical parameters of the crystals are different. You have to measure the, the parameters of your particular crystals, and then you have to carefully choose based on those parameters and based on your desired pass band, the values for the caps that shunt the crystals that go to ground, and also the termination impedances. And if you don't get them right, your pass band will be off. If you choose capacitor values that are wrong, the pass band will be off. And if you choose termination impedances wrong, you'll get Ripple. So there's a variety of software packages available that will allow you to take a look at the particular crystals that you're running and tweak the, the, the pass band with the capacitors and play with the termination impedances to smooth it out. And once I did that, it worked fine. But this is part of the learning experience. I had never done that before, so I learned a lot from this rig. Um, there's a lot of help available. There's the VFX20 EMF, and EMR the Yahoo groups. There's about 2,000 of these rigs been being built or have been built around the world, so there's a lot of people that you could contact by email to help you. There's mailing lists like these QRPL, and a lot of guys have taken their work on these rigs or particular phases of the operation and produced YouTube videos and put them up. So you can, you can go to those videos, and it's a very helpful way to get past problems. Um, the rewards, obviously, a lot of satisfaction. I gotta tell you, when you talk to Hams with this thing, they are amazed when you tell them that you're running a homebrew rig. I think there's a lot more, there are many more homebrew rigs in CW, there aren't that many in phone. So when you get on phone and you tell people you're running a homebrew SSB transceiver, I mean, a lot of times the guys, they, I have to tell you, they can't process it. They don't, they don't know what you, yeah, but, but what kind of rig is it? Well, it's a homebrew rig. Yeah, but what brand? Well, <laughs> it's called a Bidex, it's from this guy in India, and I tell them the whole story. And they really find it very, uh, I think, Uplifting. They're amazed. Some of the newer hams are amazed that this can still be done. So it's been a good experience. I worked yesterday morning on parts, and uh, he's done it great. Oh, uh, great. Oh, terrific. <laughs> great. Um, and you've become part of the old ham tradition. Shep and Dilbert would be really proud. Um, you learn a lot. You get to work the world with your own creation, and I always say it's, it's sort of like that book by Tracy Kidd, or Soul in the New Machine. You get to put a lot of soul in your new machine, and including like parts that I got from old Heath kits, parts that were given to me by friends out of their junk boxes. It makes the rig a real kind of personal creation, and it makes it a lot of fun. Uh, a lot of, if you're asking, should you try this? I definitely recommend it. Um, after all, one of the gurus who've been appointed on this project, but. Um, I point out this, that this particular rig, or any SSB transceiver, is not really a good first project. You better start out with simple projects. If you're an experienced home brewer, go for it. But if, you, if you're not, you probably want to start out with simpler projects, maybe a single-stage CW transmitter, 
maybe move on to a direct conversion receiver. The double sideband rigs that I mentioned earlier are a great way to get into home and phone. Then later, when you've kind of built up some experience and you've gone through some of the frustrations, then maybe later try this, and I certainly would recommend this. Also, another way to approach it is there are kits available. There are a lot of BIDX kits out there for different bands, and some of them, I understand, are quite good. Or you can get the boards. There's a lot of different ways to approach it, but I think it's a, a good project if you've had some experience. So the kit just comes as the blank board and all the you can do. You can get a kit with it's just a blank board, and then you get your own parts, or you can get the full kit. I think Hendrix's kit sells the whole kit, including the enclosure and everything like that. So you can do it that way. Uh, results have been spectacular with my little wild wire dipole. I've had lots of pleasant, long rag shoes on 17 meters. And this thing with a little dipole up in the trees in Falls Church has worked Japan three times with good reports. I worked South Africa with a 5.9 report. I work Europe almost every time I turn it on. Um, listen, I, I, I'm, gonna, I'm hoping this is going to work. Let's see. I hope we don't. switch to the other crystal. Now, okay, I got, I got to show you that it actually works in BX. And this was this was a bit of good luck. This was yesterday afternoon. November 2, Charlie Quebec Radio. That's November 2, Charlie Quebec Radio, N2CQR. Not very good, you're 5'9 in Northern Virginia. Name is Bill. I'm running 5 watts to a dipole from a homebrew rig. This is November 2, Charlie, Quebec Radio. So Slovenia on 5 watts, so it's a lot of fun. It, um, it got a little bit of attention. I know the guys who run the Hackaday, Hackaday website. So I sent it to them, and they ran a little piece about, uh, about the rig and about how Farhan designed it. And this was an effort to reach out to kind of the other part of the electronic hobbyist community, folks who are more interested in Hacker Day and computers. And I, I must say we got a very positive response. Um, a follow-on project, I built a second one of these. It's a BIDX 2040, it's a dual bander, obviously for 20 and 40 meters. On this one, I wanted to build a VFO and not a VXO, and I was really pleased that I was able to get it very stable. It worked out very well. You can see here, I put the copper, copper flashing in there to see if it would get kind of better shielding. Frankly, I didn't notice much of a difference, but it looks nice. Um, and I used, again, heat kit parts. Here's Farhan's new design. For those of you who are a little bit more oriented towards newer technology, Farhan has designed a new rig. It's called the Minima. And basically, think of it as BIDX meets Arduino and SI570. Instead of my VFO and VXO, he's using direct digital synthesis or the SI570 approach to generating the BFO and the BFO frequencies. It's a general coverage transceiver. It'll cover all the bands. His goal was to make it buildable for less than $100. And I must say, it's sort of against my principles, but 
I'm really tempted and I may build one of these things just because it looks so cool. If you want more information on the BIDX and the minima, I mean, just Google Farhan BIDX or Farhan minima and it'll bring you to the world of websites. There's a very active Yahoo group. There's a minima group at minima.freelist.org or minimahfsignals.org. And again, just Google those, those just minima Farhan BIDX and you'll, you'll, it'll take you to that whole part of the internet. Um, for, for my stuff on the internet, you could just Google solder smoke one word. I have a daily blog called Solder Smoke Daily News. Um, there's a podcast I mentioned earlier, it goes out once a month. And the book that I mentioned, not really to plug the book, but in case you're interested, here it is. It's available on, on Kindle as an ebook, and you can get it from Lulu also. And again, if you just um, go to my website, you can see links to it if you're interested in it. But that's, uh, that's the bid X. I have it up here for anyone who wants to take a look. I, I realize I gotta, I gotta, you gotta keep it short because really I'm just the opening act for Rex Harper, W1REX, who's gonna come in here and talk about QRP. But questions? Quick question. Did you have any trouble with the uh, super glue uh, actually uh, mounting the components and keeping them metal to metal? No, no. It, it, the, mostly the super glue is just PC board to PC board. So I'm not actually super gluing any of the components to the board. The super glue, it provides like a little platform. You can see it when you come up. You'll see what I'm talking about. Just very briefly, uh, oscilloscope, how, how, how much, what, what was the quality of the test equipment you needed to make? I'm sorry? The quality of the test equipment. You know, Farhan designed this thing so that you could, you could actually do it with a general coverage receiver and just a digital voltmeter. Now, of course, if you have a scope, it makes life easier. If you have a signal generator, it makes life easier. The more test gear you have, it makes it easier. But this was designed to be built by people with almost no test equipment. Good. Sir. So I'm working with a friend on a bit of funny, the kit from Hendrix, and uh, we have oscillations. Uh -huh. um, in particular, what, what should I look for in working through this? I mean, in general, just take a look and see if you're getting any RF on the, on the power line, on the DC 12 volt power line, and okay. see if an uh, increase in decoupling could knock that down. Take a look at the frequency of the oscillation because that'll give you a hint about where the problem is. But you know, even Farhan has oscillations in his rigs. So I mean, just stick with it. And I would ask for advice on the groups because a lot of people might have had an identical problem, especially working with the kits, and they can give you advice. And just take it, take it easy, but you, it will get fixed. And it can be frustrating. I, I mean, I had a nightmare at one point when I was having oscillation on, on another rig, and my nightmare was that I became so frustrated that I took all the parts off the board, and the board was just sitting there. And you still oscillating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, any other questions? All right, please come up and take a look at the rig before Rex starts up. So what was your 